Welcome back to another video guys. In this video I'm going to continue building out our pathfinding system. So there's a bunch of errors here that we, I've noticed when importing my robot and replacing the pyramid with this brand new unit. We've spent ages modeling and animating and you might, you guys might be having the same issues with some of your games when you first do this. So there's a few things I want to mention. Um, by the way I've just, I've edited my robot a little bit. I've made a couple of edge loops here, made it a bit rounder and stuff and I've made it look a bit nicer so just a little change from the previous video so um, if I play the game now I'm going to show you what my robot is doing so all the components that were on the pyramid object are now on our robot so the character controller, the seeker, the unit path the unit generic unit scripts that controls whether it's on screen, whether the unit selected, and also a simple smooth modifier that changes the a straight path into a smooth path. So everything should work because I've just copied everything over from the pyramid to the robot. But let's see if it's the case. Okay, so I'm trying to move the robot and it just moves a tiny bit and then it stops for some reason. I'm going to fix that in this video. You guys might have the same issue. The other thing is that my robot is not selecting here. The screen position we worked out is somewhere down here and that's not very good. I'm going to change that as well. I'm going to fix that. And also the robot's facing the wrong way. I'm going to, I want to move this direction. I want the robot to be facing the direction it's moving. So um, that's another issue we're going to deal with as well. So the first thing, the robot not moving, is because um, it turns out the next waypoint distance isn't big enough. At the moment it's 10 units and my world is quite big, my unit's quite big, so I'll, I need to increase this. I'm going to put it to 20. So if you guys haven't been following along, the next waypoint distance is used here in our unit path script. And we check, well, if the distance to the next waypoint is less than this, this we're going to move on to the next one. And then the robot's going to move towards the next waypoint. So again, if that if the distance between the robot and the, the waypoint it's currently going to is less than the next waypoint distance, we're going to move to the next, go on to the next one. And in this case, 10 units isn't big enough. I'm going to change it to 20 units, and now it should work in the game. But this flags another issue, which I'll show you now, guys. And we're going to fix this in a sec. So I've selected my unit using my big drag at the moment, so we can now move, which is great. But the robot's not stopping at the position we want it to. In fact, it's stopping 20 units from the position we want it to because when it gets 20 units uh, within the waypoint, it goes to the next one. In this case, there is no more after the final waypoint, so the unit stops moving. So when the unit gets to the final waypoint, we need to change the waypoint distance to zero because we want it to go right up to that waypoint. And it's not that hard to do actually. So I've got a public float next waypoint distance. I've got the default value of 10. I should change that to 20. I'm going to change this value to the default next waypoint distance. Okay, so this is going to be the default, which means that this should change over over a period of time. So um, within the fixed update, that's where we find out all of our path stuff. Um, like I say, we've done this from scratch. I've explained all this in the previous video. Um, so after we've worked out the direction and once we've moved, we then need to change a few things down here. So um, I'm going to declare another float. I'm going to call this one next waypoint distance. Okay, I'm going to default it to the default next waypoint distance. And then we can say if the current waypoint is the path, and then we can go to the vector path count. This is how many waypoints there are in the in the current path. So we access the vector path array. Minus one. Because if it's at this value, the vector path count minus one, we know the unit's moving to the last waypoint. If this is the case, we want the next waypoint distance to be zero. Then the unit will go right up to the last waypoint. Okay, guys, before it checks on to the next one. When it does, there'll be none left and the unit will stop. So that was my theory. Let's see if it works. So now the unit should move right to the end of the, of the path, let's say. Okay, so let's select, let's click. Right, so it was about there, wasn't it? Oh, great. So there we go. The ne the waypoint distance defaults to zero when the robot's moving to the last waypoint. That's really great. And another thing I want to mention is that the robot kind of slows down. Boom, it kind of slows down there. Rather than instantly comes to a halt, it slows down. Why is that? You might, you might not want that, especially if you're coding, I don't know, uh, humans. Um, that's because of the simple move uh, functionality. It's just the way it works. You might want to not use simple move. You might want to use the unit in another way. So if you don't like that smooth halt 
it's moving to a halt you might want to change the simple move and move the unit differently but everything works exactly the same all you need to do is move the unit a bit differently so just a side note there guys and uh, with that I'm going to move on to the next error so which I'm going to change is the robot facing the right position because let's zoom right in with our awesome camera controller no matter where I go the robot is not facing the right position and uh, looks a bit weird you might be a really clever robot and know where to go but uh, I want it to face the right position so to do this I'm going to add another bit of code down here once we know where we're moving to and have the direction we can simply rotate the robot to look at that direction so we're going to use a decent method in unity called look at transform look at so automatically rotates the robot so where the hell are we going to look at I mean there's multiple waypoints we could instead of looking at the final position because we might have to go around a building and stuff we don't want to look at the final we just want to look at the current waypoint we're moving towards okay guys so we're going to look at we're going to go to the path vector path and then we can go to the current waypoint so that might do it let's see if that works because we're going to face the current waypoint it's a vector 3 and let's see if this works and I think this is going to be quite funny the way this robot reacts okay so okay let's see if this works I want the robot to face the right way boom whoa the robot <laughs> the robot's kind of going out of control a bit and this is because the robot doesn't want to rotate in the Y rotation it just wants to rotate in the Z and the X so <laughs> to change this we need to access this vector 3 we want to look at the path vector 3.x that's fine I'm just going to copy this over path vector 3 we don't want to look at the Y position we just want to look at the trend the current position so transform position Y that's fine and then we can go to the vector path Z position so all we need to do is wrap this in a new vector 3 because we've, we've um, this, this look at method doesn't take three values it just takes one vector 3 new vector 3 let's wrap it in a new vector 3 okay now we're going to jump back to unity and see if it works okay so oh that's awesome now the robot is facing the right direction that's great I think that looks really nice but um, if you guys want to make him like gradually rotate into the position you can use the smooth damp function similarly like we did for the world camera scripts when the when the camera kind of adjusts to the height of the terrain you could do that to smooth damp a rotation if you wanted to I think there's a separate method for smooth damping a rotation but in this case I think the robot looks pretty cool so we always know where the robots going to alright so that sorts out that problem I'm going to address the dragging fun uh, problem now so we have to go over this point to select the robot which is not very good um, and to do that within every unit I'm going to check and see if there's another game object I'm going to insert another one create empty I'm going to call this one drag select I'm going to code this so you don't need this object but if you want to put it in there it's up to you guys and I'm going to put this object right in the center of my little robot and I'm going to move it down a bit to the body okay so now my robot has a drag select object in it and if we go to the unit scripts we can code this in the unit script so I'm going to make another private variable private game object I'm going to call it drag select okay so within the awake method we can actually do this in the awake because the awake method is called after all the objects are uh, initiated so our script at this point can talk to other objects in the game that's really great so after we've um, told our unit to ignore the layers we can then check and see if it has the drag object so if and to, to we can do this by saying transform find child we can find the drag select object within this game object so if there is an object in there called drag select we can then say the drag select uh, class variable is transform find child I'm going to copy and paste this to speed things up a bit dot game object alright guys simple as that so now we've actually got a drag select object and now we can change the screen position based on whether this object exists or not so in here we can say if there is a drag select object the screen position is the drag select transform position simple as that and if there's not if there's no object that exists that's drag select we can say the screen position is uh, the units transform position so 
it all depends on what you want to do but at the end of the day if you want to tweak your script and have a decent selection <laughs> position based on your unit you can go ahead and do this so I'm just going to test this out actually now okay so I'm gonna let's zoom in a bit let's okay that's really great so now my unit is being selected when the drag goes into the center of the unit okay that's cool but what if you have a big building I mean the build, if the building's so big and and you know you might want to drag across the whole building or you might want to have multiple drag select points so even if the drag goes through one of those points that could be either end of the building the whole building could select again it's up to you guys we'll explore this later on so okay our unit's looking pretty good now it's it's going in the right direction it's facing the right direction that's really good there's a couple more things I want to address before I end this video and that is to do with our selected graphic because um, by default it's always on we need to manually turn it off and I don't want that to happen and also if I go up to my object it kind of projects onto the units in the game and that's really easy to fix so if I jump into my selected object here so the ignore layers I want to ignore everything apart from the ground so that fixes that but uh, I don't want to have to drag all my units into the game and then deselect them on every single unit that might waste some time so I'm going to automatically do this in my unit script so let's go to the awake again we can do this in the awake in our unit script we can say if we're going to do something similar to the drag select so if we have found the selected object if there is one that is actually existing in there we can then go to the game object active equals false okay so every time a unit um, is created in the game on the awake method the default uh, selected graphic is then is turned off it only comes on if we actually select the unit let's just double check and see if this works before we end the video and now our little pathfinding system should be working without any errors okay so again the units the script the uh, selected object was um, hidden by default when the game loaded and it's selected when we select the unit and let's just double check if it's going to project onto our units within the game onto our lovely solar panels or our wire no it doesn't that's really great okay I'm going to leave it there guys in the next few videos I'm going to explore the resources system the uh, formations for our units and uh, build out our game so thanks for watching the video guys um, like I said I think some of you might have had these problems and uh, you know once you know how to fix them it's pretty easy to do so thanks for watching the video guys hopefully see you in the next video